Good day, my name is Kmot. This is a continuation of the presentation in Income Tax N6 for South African TVET Colleges. In this presentation, I specifically want to deal with the determination of taxable income for natural persons, and I'd like to deal with the definition of gross income in terms of Section 1 of the Income Tax Act. For ease of reference, I'd like to refer to this presentation as Part 2. In Part 1, I dealt with the structure relating to the calculation of taxable income for natural persons. It's important to realize that for one to be able to determine whether an amount is gross income or not, one needs to make reference to the definition of gross income. It is in that regard that I urge students to have a basic comprehension of the definition of gross income. For it to be user-friendly, I've broken it down into components. So one has to, when you're dealing with an amount and you want to establish whether that amount should be included in gross income, one must ensure that all components of gross income are complied with before an amount can be considered to be gross income. One other important aspect is that uh, if an amount meets the definition of gross income uh, as a rule of the thumb. If it's not exempt, it will be subject to income tax. It will be included in taxable income and, uh, and uh, uh, subject to uh, income tax. Let's quickly go through uh, each component of the definition of gross income. It says gross income is... In case of any resident, the total amount and cash or otherwise received by or accrued to or in favor of such resident during the year or period of assessment by excluding receipts or accruals that are capital in nature. I have decided to make uh, the definition applicable by looking at uh, the previous question paper that was written on the 21 of November 2016, question 4. I quickly want to explain uh, uh, each uh, component of the definition of uh, gross income in reference to uh, the question paper that was written on 21 November 2016. Let's quickly go to the question paper. I'd like to start with the first component in case of any resident. That's how the question paper looks like. I want us to confine this gross income definition to question four. In question four, I just quickly want to read a tiptoe that's referred to a person. And as you can see, tiptoe, it's a natural person. We clearly distinguish between Natural persons and juristic persons, companies being juristic persons. So tiptoe, it's a natural, it's a natural person. If you read, uh, if if you read uh, the entire information, there isn't any information that suggests that uh, tiptoe is not a resident of the republic. Republic refers to South Africa. If a question specifically states that uh, tiptoe is not the resident of the republic would have applied uh, uh, the other uh, definition of gross income. But in this case, nothing suggests that tiptoe is not the resident of the republic. Therefore, um, it is natural for us to assume that tiptoe is the resident of the republic. So it says, in case of any uh, resident of the republic, when you go to the question paper, I've already mentioned that we'll assume that tiptoe is a natural I mean, is the resident of the Republic, unless specified otherwise. Moving along swiftly, the next item I'd like to discuss is the total amount. Total amount, you can see everything uh, highlighted in, what color is this? Highlighted in, in pink. All those items highlighted in pink refers to the total amount. Of course, uh, the description is, is, the source is not the same. For argument's sake, the first relates to salary. 
But what I wanted to bring to your attention is uh, what they meant by the total amount. So everything highlighted in pink would be the total amount. Moving along swiftly, the next item I'd like to tackle is in cash or otherwise. We're still going to refer to the wording highlighted in pink. It is the total amount. Now one would need to establish whether it was received in cash. If it was received in cash, like for argument is salary, um, as a rule of thumb in South Africa, uh, most employees would receive it in cash. That uh, aspect would meet that component of the definition of gross income and everything else remaining constant, the amount of salary would be regarded uh, to be gross income. But however, you still need to tackle other components of the definition of gross income to arrive at the final uh, decision as to whether an amount is included in gross income. The next component I'd like to tackle is or otherwise. If you were to establish that any of those amounts were not necessarily received in cash, I'd like to make an example. Let's say as a, a, my contract of employment, amongst other things, says that I'm going to receive an amount of salary in cash and I'm going to receive a, a certain asset for argument's sake, which is not necessarily in, in the form of cash, but can has, has an ascertainable monetary value. As you would know, for argument's sake, if I were to receive a company car, a company car has an ascertainable monetary value. We can establish what that car is valued at. That uh, uh, ascertainable monetary value of a vehicle, even if it's not necessarily in a form of cash, it will still be included in gross income because it meets the definition of otherwise. In actual fact, uh, if this provision was not in place, uh, there would be a, a loophole and a receiver would, lo would lose quite a lot of money because most people would uh, uh, structure their salary with the employers uh, and that they would be in an agreement that instead of uh, receiving cash, they would like to receive all other assets uh, uh, otherwise uh, for lack of a better term. So to cut the story short and without confusing you, even if you receive an asset to remunerate you for services rendered, the amount will still be included in gross income and subject to income tax. The next item I'd like to tackle is received or accrued by. As you know, it's also an accounting concept and students are expected to have done accounting at this stage of their studies. Um, salary can either be received in most cases, uh, salary um, it's, it would be received when we determine uh, the taxable income for, for a year of assessment, so that's not an issue. Um, however, what I needed to state is that even if you have not received salary, you've rendered services in a specific year of assessment, and uh, you only receive um, uh, uh, money relating to the services rendered, maybe uh, at a later stage, uh, the amount will actually be taxable in a year of assessment in which it, it accrued. So we do not necessarily wait for it to be re received before we can include it in gross income, but as long as it accrues, we will include it in, in gross income. Of course, there are exceptions in, in terms of uh, Section uh, 7A, but I do not want to discuss those exceptions as they are beyond our scope. But to cut the story short, if something is accrued, there's the same concept that we use in accounting when we prepare financial statements, uh, specifically the income statement, we work on an accrual basis. If you sell something and you only receive money after uh, two years, we will actually um, uh, include it, account for this in your revenues, in the income statement, in the year in which in, in, in the year in which in the year in which it accrued. So the same applies. The next component of the definition of gross income I'd like to tackle is during the year or period of assessment. So what I need to bring to your attention is that 
In accounting, we make reference to the current financial year, which in most cases consists of 12 months. Uh, for tax purposes, we make use of the year of assessment, which is basically uh, uh, has the same characteristics as the current year of assessment. What I need to emphasize is for natural person, uh, the year of assessment always commences on the 1st of March in a specific year and it ends on the 28th of February in the next year. I'd like to make an example. Um, please, I'd like you to refer to uh, the wedding highlighted in green. Uh, the tax year ended on the 28th of February 2015. So it would have commenced on the 1st of March 2014 for it to be 12 months. So it would have commenced on the 1st of March 2014 and ended on the 28th of February uh, 2015. Essentially, that's the year of assessment for natural persons. So it's non-negotiable. It always commences on the 1st of March and ends on the 28th of February. I'd like to make an example. If you are required to, to do um, uh, calculate tax liability for uh, taxpayer in 2020 for argument's sake. Uh, 2020 would have actually begun on the 1st of March 2019 and it would end on the 28th of February uh, 2020. Okay, I don't want to go over um, board in, in, in terms of uh, uh, exhausting the entire definition. In the next uh, presentation, which I will call part uh, three, I'll dedicate it to um, explaining what but excluding receipts or accruals that are capital in nature. It's, it's, it's a bit uh, time consuming explanation. So I decided to dedicate a special presentation uh, for that item. Uh, thank you. I hope to see you in the next uh, presentation, presentation three, where I tackle um, the last item of the definition of gross income, but excluding receipts or accruals that are capital in nature.